guys, just how confident are you that you're able to win these final four minutes of every game, especially after what happened Saturday and really what's happened throughout this SEC start? Uh, it definitely gives us a lot of confidence. Uh, you know, Coach does a good job of just, you know, giving us a game plan or whatever it is that we need to do at that certain point in time. And if we execute it the way he asked, then we come out with the, the victory. Yeah, it gives us confidence executing the last four minutes. That's like that's just great. Uh, doing the good plays, doing the right things, encouraging each other. All those, all those things add up to a good win. For both of you, when Chris is kind of doing what he did on Saturday and kind of playing everywhere on the court, how does that help your games and freeing up some space outside for you to hit shots and kind of do what you need to do on the court? Oh, it's tremendous, man. I mean, he does a real good job in the post. Um, whether it's scoring in the post or rebounding and just being physical, um, I feel like any big man should be, you know, very physical like he is. Um, so we, we definitely respect what he does and appreciate, you know, everything he does because it definitely makes people draw in. And a lot of teams end up doubling him, and that opens up, you know, perimeter shots for us. Sonny, you've played in enough of these games now to have a pretty good feel, I'm, I would think, of – if it's a myth or not about whistles going your way on the road versus at home, <laughs> can you get a feel for how things go? I mean, and, and do you, if you attack the basket at home more, do you feel like sometimes you get the whistles and as opposed to road? Is that a myth? Is that true? I mean, there's some numbers that, that support with you guys this year. There is a split. And how do you feel? I'm not saying, not putting you at the officials yeah. on the spot, but is there, no. is there, is that a myth? No, I mean, it's more expected that, you know, on the road you're, you know, historically people just say you just don't, you know, really get calls. Um, I was taught to not really pay attention to that. Um, so I just play, you know, play the game however it comes. Um, I feel like most of the time, I mean, unless it's like a late game situation and they make a bad call that you should, you know, come out victorious by, you know, just executing whatever it is that you're asked to do. and. It shouldn't be determined off just calls. You know what I'm saying? But do you want I mean, do you look at that stat sheet after and free throw? I mean, oh, of course, free throws. I mean, yeah. I mean, a lot of times teams that get the most free throws up do end up winning. Um, so that does play a role into it. But I don't really pay attention to how many fouls were called, to be honest. Sonny, going off that with free throws, I know Frank has talked about it the last couple of weeks when you guys go up against maybe a zone defense, you guys maybe sit around the perimeter a little mm -hmm. bit more. What can you guys do? Is it as simple as uh, move without the basketball? What, what do you have to do when you, you know, are facing those zone defenses? And you got to attack the gaps, man. Um, you can't, a lot of times people are hesitant to attack the gaps against the zone because of the fact that it kind of just swallows you up. Um, but you just got to be aggressive. AJ, after the game on, I guess, Saturday, Frank talked about how he's pretty hard on you and Keyshawn wanting you to get better, but told you guys to never kind of lose sight of the fact that you're playing 30 minutes a game or something close to that. How easy is it to take coaching and, and take these, I guess, lumps and, and ups and downs of freshman year when you are playing so much so early? Oh, it's pretty easy. Uh, Coach Frank, he's always talking to me and Key, encouraging us to do more because he says we have that kind of potential, we can do that. And he's just like, when we're down, he always try to bring us up. Our teammates always try to bring us up. And coaching is, is, is just pretty easy with everyone just being on your side. No one's going against you. You're always trying to get you better. AJ, for you, going into Tuesday's matchup at Kentucky, what are you most looking forward to going against a program with a legacy like the Wildcats? And what have some of the veteran players told you about that environment and that team you're going against? I just can't wait to go, in, go into the environment and play my best with my teammates. I feel like if we all do do our thing, and play hard and listen to our coach and execute what we have to do. I feel like we have a good chance and going out there victorious. Oh, you said what is it going to take? Yeah. Um, just, I mean, everything. They're a good team. Um, they're really aggressive defensively. So, you know, whether we're getting calls or not, uh, just making sure that we stay aggressive and, you know, get to the basket to create opportunities for, you know, the guards and bigs um, and just nailing shots. I think that's what it's going to come down to. 
Growing up in Canada, AJ, how much did you get to see Rupp Arena on the TV or, or see Kentucky play? And what, what do you know about that building going into it? Uh, I seen a lot because like Jamal Murray went there, Shea, Shea Alexander went there, and you see it like a couple times on TV on like on the like TSN I think, and watching them like I can see like the environments. It's like hectic, it's a lot of a lot of fans screaming, they're cheering for their team, and to play against Kentucky at Kentucky, it's like it's gonna be hard because the environment's gonna be crazy. I know that. AJ, you mentioned that coaching can be easy when it's all kind of gelling together and you're taking what Frank gives you. But was that difficult at the beginning? Like, it's probably easier now, I assume, in, in February than it was in November. Was there a moment when it, it clicked that, you know, all this yelling stuff is, is still at the end of the day, it, it, he's doing what's good for you? Oh, it kind of was difficult at the beginning, but I feel like my high school coach prepared me for this because he used to always yell at me and do the same thing that Coach Frank does. So I guess that prepared me a little bit, but it was harder in the beginning than it was now. I feel like I got used to it now. Asani, Studying Kentucky and just watching Kentucky, everybody talks about the freshman and high flying stuff, but defensively they've been pretty elite in this last stretch of games, holding team under 55 points, stuff like that. What sticks out about them that you've seen to this point? I don't know how much study you've had, but, but, but why they're so good on that end of the floor? They do a very good job of, you know, um, not denying, but like kind of like shooting the gaps and getting steals and stuff like that. And, and just, you know, when you are driving, they try to, you know, play really physical. And they do a really good job at rebounding. So making sure that we get on the glass is, is critical, um, I think, to our success. What's your relationship like with Key? Um, how often do you guys hang out off the court? And what do you all like to do? And how big has he been in kind of helping you and you helping him kind of getting adjusted to your first year? Uh, Key's my roommate, so I'm with him like almost 24-7. We built a good relationship. I, off the court, we hang out like almost all the time. On the court, we are talking to each other, building a better connection. <laughs> uh, yeah, I learned off of Kiki, he learns off of me, and we just try to just like come in together and just build each other up even if we're down or if we're up and just stay humble and just stay level-headed. Uh, Go-to activities, probably. <laughs> crack jokes on each other. And then uh, favorite place to eat is probably Chick-fil-A for me. I don't know about Keyshawn, because I'm always taking the Chick-fil-A.